Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Today, we are diving into the world of learning and development. You know, L&D, that kind of unsung hero in most companies. Interesting you say unsung hero, because what we're talking about today is how some companies might be overlooking L&D in a way that hurts them, hurts their bottom line even. And we're talking about employee development too, right? Exactly. This stuff goes way beyond just shareholder equity. It gets to the heart of like employee engagement and growth too. And that's what makes this book you shared so fascinating because it really connects the dots between L&D and, well, the success of the entire company. It really does. And it all boils down to this idea of making sure that L&D is aligned with what the book calls critical business issues. Okay, so before we go any further, I think we need to define that term. What exactly as a critical business business issue, and how would a company even know if they have it one? Well, every company has them, right? It's basically those make-or-break challenges that are going to determine whether the company sinks or swims. So give us an example. Paint us a picture. Okay, imagine a tech company that's facing a ton of competition from these, like, agile new startups, their critical business issue, probably, like, innovation, right? They need to be developing cutting-edge products. So if they're pouring all their L&D resources into, say, compliance training. And not giving their developers the skills they need to actually innovate and stay ahead of the curve. That's a problem. That's a big problem. It's L&D misalignment in a nutshell. They're focusing on the what of rules, but missing the how of getting stuff done. Exactly. And the book argues that this kind of misalignment will always eventually show up in the company's performance. And in their employees' morale, too, by the way. Right, because if you're an employee and you don't feel equipped to handle those high-stakes situations... Which, by the way, is another key concept from the book. You're probably not going to be very engaged. And that brings us to those red flag questions. The book raises the questions leaders should be asking themselves about their own companies. And the first one is a doozy. It really is. It asks, if your company's top 10 training programs disappeared tomorrow, would anyone even notice? Powerful, right? It makes you think because it gets at the heart of whether those programs are actually moving the needle on those critical business issues. Or if they're just there. Or worse, focused on the wrong things entirely. And it's not just about like the content of the training, is it? I mean, the book makes a big deal about the difference between like generic training and what it calls performance-based L&D. Did that resonate with you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's huge. It's like, you know, anyone can read a book about, say, project management, but that doesn't make you a project manager, does it? It's the difference between, like, reading about how to ride a bike versus actually, you know, hopping on one and, and learning to ride. Yes, yeah. exactly. And when those high stakes situations hit, you want people who can actually DO the thing, not just like quote best practices from a manual. Right. Nobody wants to be in crisis going, oh, hold on. How do I can't handle this again? <laughs> exactly. And that's where this idea of performance based L&D comes in. It's about giving people the tools and experience to actually like perform. So it's not enough to just know stuff. You have to be able to apply it. Yes. In a real world context. And what's great about this book is that it doesn't just point out the problem. Right. It offers solutions, too. Right. It actually gives you a framework for aligning L&D with those critical business issues we keep coming back to. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the key takeaways for me was this idea of formalizing that alignment, because it's not enough to just say like, hey, L&D should be more strategic. You need systems, processes. You need to actually make it happen. Yes. Yeah. And that's where the book's suggestion of a formal alignment system, something like an L&D governance board, really got my attention. Because you need the right people involved. It's about bringing all the stakeholders together. Exactly. L&D leaders, senior management, people on the ground who actually understand the day-to-day -day challenges. You've got to break down those silos. So no more L&D working in a vacuum. <laughs> I like where this is going. But who exactly would be on this, like, dream team? Give us the rundown. Okay, so you definitely want L&D leadership at the table, right? Mm -hmm. But you also need those senior managers, yeah. the ones calling the shots on the business strategy. And then... To round it out, you'd want representatives from the different departments, mm. you know, folks who really understand the skills and knowledge their teams need to succeed. So it's like creating this task force, right? A team of experts with all the right perspectives to really connect those dots between L&D and the big picture. Yes. And they wouldn't just meet once a year and pat themselves on the back either. You mm -hmm. know, this is about ongoing alignment. So we're talking about a system. Yes. A system with regular check-ins, 
clear reporting structures, maybe even some kind of shared dashboard so everyone can track progress and see the impact of the decisions being made. Bringing that data-driven approach to L&D, just like we do with everything else. Exactly, because it's all connected, right? And I think this ties into a bigger point that the book makes, which is the need to elevate the role of L&D in general. 100%. It shouldn't be seen as just a cost center. No. It needs to be a strategic partner in the business, yeah. a driver of results. It's an investment. That's the thing people forget. Investing in your people, giving them the skills they need to succeed. That's not an expense. It's an investment in the future of your company. And that's what makes this book so valuable because it doesn't just talk about the problem. It gives you the tools to actually fix it. Yeah. It gives you a roadmap. So for our listeners who are ready to take action, what's the first step? Where do they even begin? Well, I'd say start by asking yourself those tough questions the book raises, you know, those red flags we talked about. Mm -hmm. Really reflect on whether your company's current L&D efforts are truly aligned with those critical business issues. And if they're not? If they're not, start a conversation. Mm -hmm. Talk to L&D leadership. Talk to your manager. Maybe even float this idea of a more formal alignment structure. Even if it's just like a pilot program, right? Just to get the ball rolling. Exactly. Plant that seed. Because this isn't just about L&D. It's about making sure that the whole company is working smarter, not harder. It's about empowering everyone to contribute at their highest level. So everyone wins. Everyone wins. And that's what makes this whole conversation so exciting to me. Because when L&D is done right, it has the power to transform not just companies, but careers too. And that is a perfect note to end on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of L&D. It's been an eye-opener for sure. Absolutely. My pleasure. Always happy to talk about this stuff. Until next time, everyone. See you then.